Hello everybody, Megazone X here. Back at it again to give you another very exciting video. And for today, you know what? Looking at the rest of this year, we have like a few weeks left until we finally hit 2024. And with that new year on the horizon, just ever so close, inching day by day. You know what? I started looking at everything we gotten within this year, within the past year, for all the things that Nintendo has dropped out, whether it be DLC or um, game related wise, whether it be remakes or brand new games. I may just drop a video on that in last week's video, so you can go ahead and make sure to check that out though. But just going through and making that video has made me think a lot of these upcoming games from the stuff they pumped out into what we already got confirmed for 2024, a lot of those happen to be remakes. A lot of those happen to be remasters. And you know what? What? People been running this thing in the ground about the whole Switch 2 thing though, but for me personally, I think next year is going to be the year where we might very well get this. The Switch has been on the market for seven years and going into next year for 2024, it'll be its eighth year on the market though. So you know what? We know Furukawa, you know, the current president of Nintendo right now, he's a businessman. He's a businessman and keeping his lips sealed real tight. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down right now. Some of the things that Nintendo and Furukawa needs to lead this ship on in order to have a successful launch for the Switch 2. But if you hadn't already done so, make sure you go and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell to stay up to date on all things video game related I feel like talking about and discussing. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight up into this video. All right, so first off, the thing that Nintendo needs to do with this Nintendo Switch 2 is, as the name would imply, it needs to take what the hybrid system for the Nintendo Switch has managed to do successful and carry that on over to the very next system. So yes, keep your handheld and your cons home console businesses merged together in one device. I can't say how many wonders it did for the Nintendo Switch because that way it allowed all your developers to be on one system and then managed to split your resources. And like, for example, when you had the Wii U and the 3DS, you didn't have people working on here, like was it Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds? And then had a whole nother group of people over here making like what Mario Kart or something like that. You won't have to split your resources and you get to put them all together, especially hearing all these different news reports of different companies saying, hey, the cost for game development is just currently starting to rise, especially for those PlayStation 5 games. Like some of them from like some court cases we heard and some leaks here and there though, these budgets are just ballooning so big. I can only imagine how much it will take in order for it to pop. So I think Nintendo's playing it safe in the terms of, yes, we're going to keep their handheld and their home console businesses merged together on the hybrid system. I can't see Nintendo splitting and going back to the two form factor though. So Nintendo definitely needs to make sure that that is a number one thing they must prioritize. Secondly, Nintendo needs to make sure that this next console is backwards compatible in some shape, form, or fashion. Because I can't say how many times have I heard in different podcasts that people are like, well, you know what? It should be a must. Or they don't necessarily have to. Or they just like to get away with selling, I don't know, Mario Kart Deluxe Plus Plus, all the DLC and stuff like that on one physical cartridge and just ship it out the door for like, what, $70 now? Because goodness, the price of those games are probably going to go up from 60 to 70 in that next gen though. There's a lot of going back and forth. He, he says, she says, all of this kind of stuff though. But in my gut feeling, it has to be backwards compatible. Literally, when you look at Nintendo's um, history in terms of their consoles and stuff, a lot of systems, unless there's a hardware kind of deviation or something like that, have always been backwards compatible. Look at the 3DS being backwards compatible with the DS, the DS with the GBA, or the GBA with the Game Boy or Game Boy Color though. You saw all with the handheld ones. Handheld systems have a really good history of doing it though. But even when you look on the console side, what the Wii U could support Wii games, the Wii could support GameCube games. So, you know, when you look at all of that stuff, you know, there's a good track record that we could be getting backwards compatibility in some way, shape, form, or fashion, though. So I'm really hoping that that does become the case because Nintendo has been talking about carrying your Nintendo online accounts over. So hopefully that does mean that you'll be able to carry even your digital purchases that you managed to purchase on your Nintendo Switch and be able to carry those over to the very next system. No, I feel like that would be such a misfire if they happen to leave out backwards compatibility. It's not like you're moving from the Wii U to the Nintendo Switch 
from going from a disc based formula to a cartridge based. So I feel like you're still going to use cartridges in the future. It's going to be a little challenge trying to sell those bigger gigabyte sizes for those Nintendo Switch cartridges because we know the cost of those cartridges, you know, they get a little more expensive the bigger the size they are and game sizes in general aren't getting any smaller though so that is some kind of hurdle that nintendo's gonna have to find a way to jump over though but nonetheless though backwards compatibility i feel like needs to be a must having a brand new shiny system might be really exciting and especially in the fans of big nintendo fans however while you have really cool brand new hardware you need to have an impressive launch titles or games and software that goes hand in hand with the new console though so in the same way how nintendo managed to drop out several games that managed to come out in 2017 like look back at it the switch dropped off in march of 2017 right and it dropped with legend of zelda breath of the wild literally the next month in april you had mario kart then when you roll over there to may i don't think there was like super anything major in may you roll over to june you had arms july you had splatoon 2 uh, you had to skip past august and september then i know you have mario odyssey in october and then i know you had xenoblade chronicles 2 in december and there was a couple of few other games i managed to miss out of that list though but it felt like in 2017 you had a game almost launching every single month some kind of game out there whether it be a fighting game you know a shooting game a competitive game racing game you had a wide variety of stuff though and i feel like in the same avenue for this nintendo switch 2 you need to come out firing on all cylinders i'm talking about you need to have like your next 3d mario game that comes after odyssey it needs to be there i would dare say at this point since we haven't gotten a new 3d mario in quite some time outside of bowser's fury segment in terms of like what it was included within the super mario 3d world it needs to be out there on launch day and even with mario kart i feel like in the same avenue maybe that i don't know one of these two games is going to be a launch title whether it be mario kart or mario odyssey and then vice versa the other one will probably be out within like the first few months or something like that though but regardless Regardless, you need to have something hitting, if not every single month, every other month. So you just gotta have some good RPGs, you gotta have your racing games, you gotta have your platformers, you gotta have some kind of action adventure. I don't know, maybe hit us with that Astral Chain 2 or something like that, it's flashy. Something that brings in the core audience, not just the casual. You gotta be able to cater to both of those two different audiences if you wanna pull in as many people to kind of hop off the, the Switch bandwagon and move on to the Switch 2. There's gonna have to be really strong incentive to get off in one system and move on to the other though. So having a very strong lineup of games especially when that first year of launch is going to be critical for Nintendo. Now, this next one is a very interesting thought, but it has been running in the back of my mind. If you look at your phone, if you happen to be like a PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4 user, many of y'all might have that PlayStation app. In that app, you're actually able to go through, make purchases, boot up the system, and a wide variety of things, manage your online subscription services, and a plethora of different things. I feel like Nintendo very well needs to move down that path. Not just have an app, that's just dedicated to online people, but just a app in general. Basically, because even now, you can go to Nintendo's website right now and actually purchase games right off the website. What's stopping them from being able to incorporate all of that into a universal app? So that way you can make all your purchases and stuff off of that, be able to manage, you know, your friend requests and stuff. Just make things in life a little bit easier. And then even when in that app, you can have a dedicated section where it says, hey, for online members only, and then you can incorporate things such in there like your smash brothers app you know that animal crossing app or the splat net 3 for like splatoon you can have all of that stuff dedicated for specific games that use online functionality though but i think as a whole it'll be really nice to have a app that basically dedicates and run everything that your console's able to do online offline you know your stats your settings everything it'd be really nice and convenient to have something you know on a similar avenue like what playstation has as their app you know that's just a little food for thought right there and speaking about online services yes the nintendo switch online app that needs to be a carryover thing from day one of the nintendo switch 2 because we can't have or can't even afford to have any soft reboots um with the online services so when i mean you know it's there on day one i mean you're gonna have the nes the snes and the game boy game boy color games for the basic tier already on there for expansion pack users you have your sega genesis games you have your nintendo 64 games and you have your gba games all there on launch every single one of those games you're not missing a beat because even whenever you look at the nintendo 
Nintendo Switch 2, whenever it does come out, I can guarantee you they're going to be running and supporting the Switch as well as the Switch 2, especially if they're making the Switch 2 backwards compatible with Switch games. So they still will have to be running that ecosystem, though. So it will be a little bit odd or a little bit weird if you manage to have, you know, this new brand new shiny system come out and you can only be able to download and play certain select games off the NSO service where if you pull up your old Switch, you'd be able to actually play everything up there as of that moment, though. That would be a little bit odd though. So yes, Nintendo, you need to come out strong with all that stuff carrying over, but not even just coming out there strong. We need a whole new plethora of games that are coming to the service in general. I know it would be a little crazy to put GameCube games out there though. Maybe if you want to skip it, okay. At least give us some like Wii games or something like that. I don't know. You, you gotta have to kind of mix it up though. Get people excited. Like even as of now, we ran through all the rest of the N64 games that we kind of know through. I mean, you know 1080 snowboarding we should still be getting that but outside of that we don't really know anything else they did manage to announce that jet force gemini a n64 game made by rare is actually coming to the system though so now we're getting those games are going to be announced out of left field though we're kind of in the unknown territory as of this moment though and it would be really clean and really nice if they managed to come out and say oh we're having all these game few games double dash star fox adventure you know f-zero gx all of that stuff planned to be coming out to the service. So really cool, really nice. Just saying, Nintendo, just saying. Obviously, one of the biggest things that comes to mind with brand new systems is how powerful are they in comparison to the previous generation of that said console that came out prior to it, along with all the other competition that is out there on the market. That's what truly gives people to be excited about whatever new console is going to be next because you can look at that flash new system i can't say you know the stark contrast difference that we got between the nintendo wii and the wii u even though i was like one of the few people to buy that console though because man i can't get over the fact that how hd graphics look for nintendo games in general making that jump from the wii to wii u even when i was going through and playing the original mario kart 8 i was like dang Racing never looked this good. You got to have some of those moments or some of those epiphany moments, just some moments of realization that be like, oh goodness, this looks cool. This looks great. You know what? I got an impulse by this sucker right now because you don't want to miss out on this brand new system though. You got to, you know, impress people. And I think one of the ways how they can do that is via, you know, the NVIDIA technology that's going to potentially go up into this next new system. We've been hearing some things on the side or the rumor mill and stuff like that though, because NVIDIA you know there are people that are behind the graphics card that actually runs behind the switch i'm pretty sure nintendo is still striking deals with them using their technology for what could be in the switch too and they're even working with some technology right now that's going to do some like artificial upscaling and stuff that could potentially allow us to see that 4k label on that nintendo switch 2 box in comparison to you know the switch we have right now which doesn't have 4k compatibility in it while i guess it might not be running natively 4k with that upscaling stuff you know for the casual consumer they might just look at that and be like oh well, it, you know, it doesn't look much difference to me. It actually looks, you know, supports my 4K TV. That's what Nintendo needs to do. Anything that kind of bridges the gap between power, between this Nintendo Switch 2 potentially and the PS5 as well as the Xbox Series X systems, if you're able to artificially boost it to where it kind of has some similar specs in terms of visually what's being shown on the screen in comparison to what actually is on the console, it's not as powerful. You got to do some kind of trickery. You got to do some kind of advancements with the technology that is given that'll actually make it competitive in the marketplace for the next upcoming years though. Because who knows, by the time the system drops out, the PS5 Pro might be a thing. I don't know. People playing 8K, I don't know why that's even really a thing that people are kind of bolstering about. Like, does anybody really care about that? I, I don't think so though. But yeah, so honestly, Nintendo needs to work with NVIDIA, work some little magic with their technology that they have on the market right now. Have have a dedicated chip that's going to specifically be used for the Nintendo Switch 2 in and of itself, and that can maybe do some wonders um, for what we can see within this next console from Nintendo, though. So, work your magic, NVIDIA. Work your magic. And lastly, one of the major things you need to look at with this Nintendo Switch 2 is the form factor and the price point. In terms of the form factor, we've been seeing this a lot from PlayStation and Xbox, whether you get a physical and a digital version of both the console. And I don't think Nintendo 
will actually split it be in physical and digital because otherwise you have to have a significant amount of you know cost difference between the two that will incentivize people to go one way or the other while yes everybody in the in the gaming sphere in terms of everybody on the business side wants you to move digital because we're inching slowly slower um to that all digital future but i feel like with nintendo i feel like they're going to be probably a couple generations behind before moving everybody over to digital because they make so many sales off of their physical media like if you look at the sales charts and stuff over there in japan and then even if you look at like amazon and stuff like that you know what they making a lot of money off of the physical sales and you know they wish a lot of that was all digital they're getting there but it's always a slow process for nintendo it's never like real quick for them so i don't think there's gonna be a digital and physical console it's just gonna be a straight up physical console that you can also digitally download your games too now in terms of the cost or the price point for this thing firmly believing at, you know, in terms of the high end, it needs to be no more than $400 right there. I feel like, you know, if you manage to get at 400, you know, that's still technically a hundred bucks cheaper from the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. So you know what? It's actually competitive in that marketplace though. But in terms of the cheapest that I could see it going, maybe be around 350. So that's the cost of the original Switch OLED model right there. And if they were to go 350, that probably will actually kick down some of the, the cost points if they were to move the console price to 350 i feel like with the nintendo switch oled model maybe that gets dropped down to 300 you know the basic model 300 goes down to like 250 or something like that and then maybe they leave the switch light alone or something like that though but i feel like in terms of that cost point it should be somewhere between the range of 350 and 400 at the worst so i think you know if they manage to strike within that range i think that won't be too polarizing for people to actually go out and get another system i don't think it'll be too far out of their budget it's not, it's not like you're chopping off your arm and selling it to sony or xbox over there at that half a grand price being 500 for their consoles though so still will be competitive in terms of that so overall there's a lot of different things that nintendo can basically do in terms of them being able to outshine the competition in terms of you know selling their new system to the audience convincing people hey you had a lot of fun on that nintendo switch but you know what it's about time for you to move over to this you know this brand new system that's going to be able to do a lot more have a lot more power behind it a lot more options features accessibility and everything else in between though so you know for Kawa, he's a businessman he's a businessman he doesn't do a lot of interviews though and he keeps that lid sealed very tight but i feel like at the end of the day he probably knows what he's basically doing right there. I'm just saying, though. And I feel like with this being his first console that he's going to wind up launching, he may very well have everything I put out in this list be executed within this next console, though. But we still have to wait and see, even if that's going to be the case, because I have a feeling it is going to drop out in 2024. And if it does drop, maybe September, maybe November in terms of the launch month. I don't think it's going to pull like a a marked date like how the nintendo switch did way back in 2017 though but y'all gotta let me know down in the comment section down below what all do you think about my thoughts on what should be done and what should be executed for nintendo to knock it out of the park with this next new system i just love to hear your thoughts down below but that's gonna basically do it in terms of today's video though so if you really like it make sure you hit that like button go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell to stay up to date on all things video game related i feel like talking about and discussing so remember y'all until our video i make next see y'all